All right, so uh, I'd like to introduce you to some new participants. Um, first, Sam Berge. Not surprising that we didn't know how to pronounce his last name. It's the first time I put him in a match all season, right, Berg? Yes, sir. Heck yes. And uh, this is Brooklyn, and this is Haley, and they were a little upset that Daddy was going to a press conference. So UCLA and their graciousness allowed me to bring them along. So um, this is their first press conference. Um, incredible team win for the Bruins. Uh, just to be able to, to make the moves that I made tonight and uh, to have the success we had with everybody coming off the bench and contributing was a, a significant example of the depth and talent that we've had and has helped make us the team that we are this season. Uh, you got a glimpse of what we've had in the gym every day in practice and uh, you can see how that's made us better. And we talk all the time, game time's team time, and there was no better example of what we did here tonight. Um, thrilled for the guys. It was one of those matches where um, you, you, it's tight the whole way. Every point matters. It's super close. And, uh, and you're at your edge, the competitive edge of focus necessary to win in that environment. And I think our men handled that moment exceptionally well. And I'm proud of them. So uh, thrilled with the victory, happy for UCLA, and for these, these, uh, these men. Great win. Vinny Lopes for off the block. John, can you talk about what made you go with Sam in this moment and insert him into the starting lineup, what you were seeing on the court? I don't know. <laughs> Wild card. You know, uh, sometimes you, you, in these moments you go with the senior. I've done that throughout the course of my career in big moments. And Bergie goes down on the list of big time performances from guys coming off the bench when it mattered most. And uh, so I, I was, I had 100% confidence in him to do it. That is a fact. I had no doubts. I, I, I wondered this week, you know, gosh, I wonder if it's going to be one of those. And it was one of those. And uh, I was just uh, going to, listen, Sam can pass the ball. We were struggling with the five to five float, uh, which is not unfamiliar territory for me. Um, so we knew the adjustments we needed to make, but ultimately, even when we were making the adjustments, Alex struggled a little bit taking that with his hands. They were struggling to figure out the angle on the seam, and I just went with Bergie because I knew he could pass the ball. Um, there's times during this year in the train environment where bergie has been playing libero for us on the second team. Like he's got a ton of passing reps, the guy can pass the ball. And oh, and by the way, he's got a great arm. So, you know, I, I just had no doubts when I put him in that it was that he was going to step up and he did. Tiki, you know, in with the LA Times, Sam, what, what was your reaction to getting your getting your number called to go in? I was just fired up. Sorry. I was just a little fired up, uh, you know, kind of just blacked out for a quick second and uh Went and tried to do my thing and just bring my energy and positivity and kind of just try to have a good time on the court. And that's what we did. Merrick, what was your reaction to seeing Sam get this opportunity? He's obviously been working hard all year and to see him step up here when it mattered the most. Yeah, kind of what um, Spraw said, like, I know Bergie can pass the ball and he passes well. And even too, when, you know, we're in serve and pass and things like that. And every time I serve, Bergie's one of the number one guys on the team that frustrates me because when I have a good serve, he always has a pretty good pass. Um, so I was excited that, you know, obviously some guys struggled passing. And I was excited seeing Bergie come in because I knew he was going to be able to, to fill in that role of just being able to pass really good balls. Um, and he not only did that, but he, you know, stepped up and had some pretty incredible serves and some pretty incredible swings. and pretty big moments. Um, so I honestly was just super stoked to have Bergie out there and the energy he brought and just the eye contact and um, everything that he brought onto the court. It relaxed me, I think, in the big moments and also, I think, relaxed our other teammates. Actually, uh, Robert Sparrow um, for VolleyballMag.com. Uh, Merrick, great blocking performance, five block assists and a block and adding on um, seven kills. But you also brought high energy in the middle, uh, especially with Austin Wilmot and Andy Fuller bringing some re really good offense tonight. What upped your game tonight? Um, I think it's very much my mentality of right now it's do or die. And I feel so much love for the team that we have. And I feel so much love for our coaches and just all the hard work that we've put in all year. And I hey, really... I'm going to call a timeout. 
Can you go back to wherever that was before? Even if it's a little light, we'll just have to speak up a little bit because it's giving some feedback on the lower volume. Okay. All right, time in. Um, sorry, what was the question? I kind of lost my train of thought. You were really rolling too. I know, I know. Great blocking performance, adding in offensively, and what brought the higher level of energy uh, for you, especially with the performance of Austin Wilmont and Andy Fuller on the other side of the net. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, like I was saying, it was kind of, I know in this moment, it's kind of do or die, and I feel so much love for my teammates and my, and my coaches and just everyone who helps make this UCLA men's volleyball work, and I really have just felt a lot of love this year, and this has been my favorite year of being at UCLA, so um, no matter what would have happened tonight, I, I would have been that guy, and I would have brought the energy and, you know, had a smile in my face, and I've tried to do that all season and kind of be the guy that people can lean lean on and look at if, you know, they're struggling and I'm just going to be smiling at them and, you know, trying to try my best to help them out just with my, my energy and um, just that aspect of my game that I bring. Um, I'm glad that I was able to block some balls and I in some important moments and, you know, put some balls away when, when they were needed. Um, but, yeah, I really just felt a lot of, I feel a lot of love for my teammates and that, Everything you, you're seeing with me smiling and my energy, that's just all me and that's all real. And that's just my love for my teammates, yeah. Thank you, and then this one's for you, John. Um, a lot of their teams, they go maybe uh, seven or eight, uh, even nine on their roster to put on the floor. You went out with 12 guys tonight, that's all playing time. And I know we had spoken earlier in the season that your goal was to develop a very deep bench. Do you feel like you accomplished that goal? No, oh, no question, no question about it. And it, it isn't just the development. I think it's the talent and the guys willing to come here to UCLA when they know there's talent. In that respect, I felt like this team is old school. I mean, this is a, as deep a team at UCLA as I've seen since maybe I, I coached and played here years and years ago. And that depth is what made us great years ago and helped us win a lot of championships. And when players, players have a choice these days, they can go somewhere where they really, they want to, play and start and, I don't know, have a nice social media following and all that good stuff, you know, and, and that's part of the game today, there's no question. I think what, what we like is the depth and, and players to, to come here knowing that they're going to have to compete, it's going to make them better, the best version of themselves is going to be created in this gym here at UCLA. I know both these men made that decision, 100%, 100%. I remember the phone call I had with Merrick when we talked about it. And Berge came here, he was a blue collar guy that hadn't had a shot yet and, and, and yet came here to make a choice to try and take his shot here at UCLA and he, he made the most of it today. I'm just following up on that, uh, Merrick and Sam, what's it like just joining a team with so much depth knowing that you have to earn playing time instead of you know, being, having, having it guaranteed? Um, yeah, it was definitely something I thought about, especially when I know UCLA is not a hard place to recruit to, recruit to, and when I was here on my visit, I kind of knew that everything about you know the culture and the coaches and just the location, and especially being from the South, it was this was a place that I wanted to be. But I definitely knew um, that I was going to have to work for my spot, and it wasn't just going to come and be handed to me. And that was a very different experience for me, especially being from Texas, where the sport isn't too big. But I loved the challenge, and I think that was another reason why I wanted to come here, because it kind of felt as if, hey, if I can be on the court at UCLA, then I can be on the court anywhere. But it never was something that I was afraid of. It honestly only motivated me to want to work harder and be better, especially in the off season and things like that. But I think our culture and how many guys that we have that can be on the court is, is pretty unreal, and it's not very common. And, Spross said it the other day, but two days ago, you know, the B side beat, beat the A side in practice, and that happens pretty often. So it really does make me better. And even when it comes to J.R. Norris, who's our third middle off the bench, and, you know, sometimes in matches I get kind of in my head about who's blocking me or what I need to be doing, and then I kind of get reminded, hey, I'm playing against J.R. every day. He's better than all these guys that, you know, I'm going up against. So that also brings me, you know, a lot of just comfort, too, that I'm playing with against someone in practice every single day for hours and hours every week, that's just making me better. And uh, <clears throat> for me personally, um, I came from a club team that was 
pretty dang good. Um, I was, again, a, a bench player there, and so I've been kind of used to being that guy who just has to grind, grind his ass off if he wants to have any sort of shot. Um, and so I'm pretty comfortable where, where I am on the bench and, you know, having to come in and just battle for the position because I think it's fun. I think it's a part of the competition. I think, you know, you got to love one another and love fighting against each other and fighting with each other at the same time. And, uh, you know, I just had a really good time. Uh, and thank you for my shot, Coach. <laughs> um, we're going to do two more questions in the room, and then we'll go to Zoom. Hi, uh, Coach uh, John Sorosso. It's going to be um, another match against Long Beach State, similar to 2018. But you mentioned it's a different team, a uh, deep bench. Can you talk about how you plan on coming out with a different outcome this year? Different teams on both sides. So it's a very, I mean, it'll be a completely different experience. Uh, I like where we're at. I liked having been out on the court, having this chance to get out there and compete and be in that type of uh, high intensity moment, high focus moment. I think that that's good for us. Um, they're, they're a great team. They're a physical team. They're a very different team, a, a really different team with different matchups from what we saw tonight. So it again, it'll be about how we adapt and, and how guys make adjustments, how as a staff we make adjustments. Um, but it, it'll be another great volleyball match. They're a great volleyball team. And, and so I think it'll be uh, Last time we played them, there was a lot, of, a lot of people in the stands in a big match that went five and was a, a great volleyball match. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing the next one will be a great one, too. Last question. Shh, shh, shh. Last one, last one. Okay. For Coach, when you, when you are bringing in just all sorts of different attackers, how much confidence does it give you to change those attackers, but you still have that kind of constant and miles at that center position. How much does oh. that make your life easier? Sure, sure. Listen, I can't tell you exactly everything that's going through my brain when I do those things. I've been doing it 20 years. You know, like, you know, the Malcolm Gladwell book, Blink, you know, like the, it's a study on, the ex, on expertise and how people that have been doing things for a long time really can't articulate why they do what they do. I, I, I can't articulate it. I know how I feel about it. It's just this gut feel, and I, I, had, I knew it. I just knew it. And so I, I don't know if I can explain it any different than that. Of course, the, the consistency of miles that you're referencing is, is really critical for our team this year. It is really hard to be a first-year setter and get this far. It is, I don't know how many times it's really been done. And uh, for him to be in this position and, and still be learning, like he's going to go back and he's going to learn a lot from this experience. He's going to be better next time he comes out on the volleyball court. And uh, the, even the improvements he's made over the last week, I mean, you can see it. And so I, I'm really confident in his ability to continue to grow and develop. This is just the beginning for him. And uh, yeah, we, we're a good team when he's playing well like this. Thank you, Coach, Kay. Eric, and Sam. And thank you, girls. Say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right.